Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. When I first began warning of the coming worldwide socio-economic crisis years ago, the notion seemed quite fanciful. Yes, there were problems, there always are, but there was little on the immediate horizon that suggested a global meltdown. It was, therefore, understandable that the idea might not have been afforded credibility. Today, the opposite is true. Almost daily, we receive reminders of an impending collapse. We're now seeing, on a daily basis, not just suggestions of an unraveling, but dramatic events taking place almost too frequently for the average person to process. Understandable then, if people say to themselves, it gets worse every day, we're about to be gobbled up by the globalists, there's no hope. There's so much emphasis on the negatives that it's difficult for anyone to recognize that a major pushback is now underway. It is true that the first world countries that make up the push for globalism are increasing their forcefulness almost daily. But for roughly 18 months, a major pushback has been on the rise. Since the legacy media don't comment on it, it's less noticeable, but it's growing fast. The BRICS have taken on new members, members that, together, will soon eclipse the former hammerlock on energy supply held by the US. The petrodollar has lost its exclusivity and is on its way to becoming marginalized. Trade is now growing between the BRICS and the majority of nations in the world. Most African nations have signed agreements with the world's most powerful military, Russia, for military security. Several African countries have recently given globalist countries the boot. The reaction? The globalists have exited quietly. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Since the end of World War II, the first world countries have been on the US gravy train, tagging onto its economic prosperity. But now, that train is running out of fuel fast. It's the most indebted country in history, and its creditors are not just refusing to accept more US debt, but are dumping treasuries back into the US. Further, the US is breaking the bank over an endless series of proxy wars, the latest costing billions. In economic terms, the US has, like Wiley Coyote, run off a cliff, but hasn't yet looked down to notice the fact. But this is not a cartoon. It's the real deal. The majority of countries in the world are moving decidedly away from the first world globalist countries and forging new alliances. These countries hold the majority of the world's gold and represent the great majority of productivity for world goods. They are the future. But, even at this late date, isn't it possible that the globalists might do an about-face and reverse the entire process, maintaining hegemony? And the globalists still command considerable military control. Do they not have the force to tell the world that they'd better continue to do as they're told, or else? Well, yes, there's a possibility that they might make such threats and attempt to make good on them. They're already suggesting as much with regard to Russia and China. So, do the globalists still have the mojo to pull it off? Well, this brings up a question that's not often discussed. Most people tend to see the globalists, the deep state, the elites, etc., as one great homogenous body that thinks and acts in perfect lockstep like a well-oiled machine. But, as with any governmental power, this is never true. Every department fights jealously with every other department. Managers, generals, and politicians are always jockeying to do it my way, and each nascent leader waits for his moment when he can try to grab the brass ring at the same moment that others are also grabbing. This assures that a uniform forward charge for global takeover will not take place. 
And to this, we add another layer of dysfunction. We're presently in the second half of a fourth turning, a time when, historically, the sociopaths have risen to the top rungs and are everywhere, upping the level of insanity. It's quite true that sociopaths are far more obsessive about their own power than most people. They have great drive and great tenacity. Some of their traits increase their initial success. Ignoring right and wrong. Telling lies to take advantage of others. Not being sensitive to or respectful of others. Using charm or wit to manipulate others for personal gain. Having a sense of superiority and being extremely opinionated. But, if we study the pathology more deeply, we also find that their obsessive characteristics include self-defeating traits as well. Let's have a quick look. Resorting to criminal behavior. An inability to understand that they possess weaknesses. An inability to cope with or even accept personal failure. An inability to work productively in concert with others. Ultimately, they always betray their partners in the belief that they'll rise higher as a result. Well, there's quite a lot of room to go wrong, particularly those last bits. The higher a sociopath climbs, the greater his obsession, and the greater his self-delusion. And ultimately, as history demonstrates, it's these uncontrollable traits that bring about a sociopath's downfall. This is, in fact, the reason why, just as empires peak, they implode through dysfunctional leadership. You are encouraged, when you see the increasingly frightening events playing out in the media, to consider that, in the mix, you may also be seeing symptoms of globalist self-destruction, but may not be attributing great enough importance to them. And yet, whenever we receive yet another shock of recent developments, if we sit back and read the tea leaves carefully, we'll notice that the globalist edifice is showing considerable signs of fracture, particularly with regard to a loss of control of the globalist machine itself. That machine is now blowing gaskets almost daily. And now, for a bit of optimism. Years ago, when I first foresaw this coming crisis, I began to attempt to assess what the outcome would be. Over time, sad to say, my predictions have proven accurate to a great extent, and whenever I erred, it was to underestimate the severity of events that would occur. But always, my main focus was on the outcome. Back then, I had no real feel for whether the world would end up under globalist enslavement, or whether globalism might be defeated. The future appeared to be a toss-up. It's only been in the last two years that I've been able to say with some certainty that the odds are increasing regularly that globalist defeat will be the outcome. At this point, I believe that the light at the end of the tunnel is growing wider. This is not to say that everything will be hunky-dory from here on in. Far from it. We'll be battling CBDCs, wokeism, and the arbitrary removal of rights in the US and some other countries. In fact, we'll see the globalist push continue to increase in both velocity and magnitude. And yet, I've never been more hopeful than now. To be sure, the globalists still have several years of destruction to deliver, but the second and third worlds are moving decidedly away from globalism and are building up ahead of steam in the opposite direction. Although the first world countries will continue to be the riskiest countries in which to live at this time, the corner has clearly been turned. The trick now is to navigate the rocky road as best we can while planning for a new life on the other side. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.